Nana, a studious girl, falls for the charming and flirtatious Bunny on a trekking trip. They meet again years later, but Bunny still prefers adventure and a fast life over something stable. Invitations for an Indian wedding are sent out. One package doesn't deliver because the recipient is not home. Nana is looking through her yearbook and is lost in memories of the good times. Eight years ago, Aditi recognizes Nana as the topper from her school. Nana's mother judges Aditi for her clothes and brags about Nana studying medicine. Aditi feels Nana is still the same. Aditi is an art student who is glad the college vacations are starting. She is going for a trip to Manali with her friends, Bunny and Avi. A person from the store gives Nana the itinerary Aditi left behind. Bunny is interning with Argentinians who make travel shows all over the world. They're trying to interview a red light worker in Agra, and Bunny convinces her to cooperate. Mohini, the most beautiful among them, is introduced. Bunny tries to flirt with her and manages to charm her with his dance. Nana's mother thinks people like Aditi have no future. Nana reminds her that everyone doesn't want to become a doctor. She is jealous of Aditi for enjoying her life and is frustrated she can't even take a break. Bunny finds his father waiting for him when he arrives home. He wants to meet Bunny before he leaves for Manali the next day. His stepmom thinks the Manali trek is very dangerous. She reminds him they don't have enough money. Bunny is paying for this trip with his own money and asks her to avoid giving her opinions. He finds a backpack from his dad in his room. Bunny wants to do things on his own terms and claims he lied to his dad because he worries too much. His dad understands that Bunny needs adventure and asks him to take care of himself. That night, Nina gets irritated with her books and checks out the Manali trek. Avi seems nervous before their trip because of a cricket match. He claims he doesn't want to go, so Bunny also pretends he doesn't care. Bunny knows Avi has spent all his savings by betting on the match. He offers to pay for Avi's share of the trip. Avi asks him to save his hard-earned money, but Bunny feels money will keep coming. He thinks it's more important to have experiences. Nana's mother wakes up to a note from her. Nana turns up at the station and asks Bunny for help. He thinks she's someone he met at a party. She reminds him they were in school together, and he hugs her when he realizes who she is. The trip leader, Sumer, feels it's too late for her to join last minute. But Bunny offers to let her take his seat. He helps her with the bags, but Nana seems to be lost in her thoughts. Bunny jumps out to remind her she has to board. Nana is scared because she has never been on a trip alone. Bunny asks her to trust him and assures her it will be a lot of fun. Aditi wonders if Nana is stalking her. Avi remembers how people used to fight to sit behind Nana during exams. Laura comes to ask them for a knife, and Avi frantically starts looking for one. Bunny conveniently has one, and starts flirting with her. She's also going for the Manali trek, so Avi and Bunny invite her to sit with them. She rushes to get her friends, Kriti and Esha. Lara suggests playing a drinking game, but Nana doesn't drink alcohol. Bunny makes her comfortable, and asks her to play with apple juice. Lara explains the rules of, never have I ever, and claims that people who have done the things someone mentions have to drink. Most of them seem to have been in love. Nana is the only one from the group who hasn't watched porn or been arrested. When she realizes she's the only one who hasn't kissed someone, she feels awkward. Nana opens the window in her room in Manali. Bunny comes to their room to wake Aditi up. She refuses to get out of bed, so he puts on a song and starts dancing. Avi joins him too, but Aditi switches off the TV. They try to continue, but forget the lyrics. They're surprised when Nana continues the song and come over to start dancing with her. Aditi soon wakes up too. After Nana prays at the temple, she finds Bunny recording a wedding procession. Avi finds the bride pretty, but Aditi asks him to leave her alone. She knows it's normal in small towns to marry off a girl right after she finishes school. She hates arranged marriages and claims hers will be a love marriage. Bunny feels bad watching someone else's misery. He is sure the girl will run after her husband with a gun in two years. Bunny is allergic to marriage and compares it to eating the same boring food every day. He feels people need variety in their lives. He thinks it's better to never marry than marrying five or six times. In the market, a woman calls Avi a pervert and accuses him of touching her. Avi claims he would never tease a woman who looks like her. Aditi asks him to be respectful, but she also gets mad when the woman keeps abusing Avi. Her partner comes to threaten Avi, but Aditi tries to defend him. When he asks Aditi to move and punches Avi, Bunny comes over to punch him. Bunny is too strong for him, so the man apologizes to Avi and leaves. Nana points out as the injured man assembles a gang of goons to fight them back. Aditi still tries to be tough and claims her friends can fight them. 
Bunny and Avi decide to run and take Aditi and Nana along. Bunny runs with Nana in a different direction, and they try to hide from the goons. When one of them corners Bunny, Nana sprays ketchup on his eyes. Avi keeps trying to stop Aditi from attacking them. Nana thinks it's a stupid plan to throw color on the goon, but Bunny claims to know what he's doing. He throws it on an innocent bystander, and the goon corners Bunny. Nana helps him again by beating the goon with Bunny's bag. Avi finds alcohol where they're hiding, but someone spots them. Bunny gets a cart for them to travel on, and everyone boards it. As the goons are still behind them, Nana hits a ladder last minute to make sure the goons get trapped. As they leave the goons behind, Aditi praises her for the quick thinking. Before the trek, Sumer asks everyone to divide themselves into two teams. They need to race to the campsite, and the losing team is supposed to make dinner for the winning team. Lara finds Bunny relaxing. She wants their team to win, but Bunny doesn't think anyone can defeat them. Lara complains about a little scratch on her leg, so Bunny pretends it's a big deal. He gets a random plant to help her, and claims it's good for the skin. As he's rubbing her legs, Lara notices someone ahead of them. Bunny joins Nana, and begs her to let him win the race. She thinks it's his fault for lagging behind. Bunny claims casual flirting is good for health. He has to flirt with Lara, because he can't flirt with someone like Nana. He thinks girls like Nana are made for love, which is bad for him. She realizes he has trapped her feet in a rope and cheated so he could win. As Nana's team makes food, Bunny asks the group to party with him and some foreigners. Bunny comes to get something from his bag and starts peeing. Nana points a torch at him because she heard some noise. She claims she's not interested in the party, but Bunny can tell she is dying to attend it. He throws away her notes and refuses to give the book till she's honest. She admits she wants to come to the party, but claims it's not easy for her. She knows Bunny has always been like this since school. It's easy for him to make new friends and charm people. She reminds him that she had no friends in school and thinks she's boring. Bunny points out how brave it was for her to turn up for the trip last minute with strangers. He also thinks she's cool because of the way she fought goons and sings Bollywood songs. He asks her to stop feeling bad for herself because he feels she is perfect the way she is. He also thinks her smile is very dangerous. He knows he would have lost his heart to her smile if he had one. Nana blushes and starts imagining him around her all the time. Bunny is constantly flirting with Lara, but she keeps seeing him everywhere. They arrive at Kipshi Pass, the highest point of their trek. Bunny wonders what's further ahead on the hills. Sumer explains that those mountains are believed to be haunted. There used to be an old temple where apparently any wish came true on a full moon night. Hundreds of people went there, but no one returned. The legend claims that thousands of spirits gather there on full moon night to hope for a miracle. It's full moon night that day too, so he knows no one will dare to go there. Pretty feels scared of the ghosts, but Avi comes closer to comfort her. They all share what they want to do when the trip ends, and Bunny claims he wants to get rid of Avi's snoring. Avi thinks Bunny will have to get used to it, because they have planned to rent an apartment together. Avi keeps flirting with Pretty, and Nana notices how Aditi is looking at them with jealousy. Bunny is out late that night, and Nana tries to scare him. She wants to continue the trek with him, because she needs to get to the temple. Bunny is unable to match up to Nana's speed, but she offers to rest. She asks for alcohol, because it's too cold. Bunny feels she's full of surprises. He shows her the scrapbook he carries around all the time. It has pictures of different places in the world. Bunny explains that it holds all his dreams. He wants to explore every part of the world one day. She asks how he will have time to do normal things, like settling down. Bunny is sure he doesn't want an ordinary life. He wants every day to be filled with adventure and never stop the excitement. He feels he has overshared and wonders why he can talk so freely with Aditi and Avi. As they continue the trek, Nana remembers how magical it was at the top of the mountain. She realized she was in love with Bunny and made a wish for him. At their next stop, Bunny wakes up and notices that Nana is missing. Nana starts spraying water on them to celebrate the festival of Holi. Bunny keeps dancing with Nana and even leaves Lara to join her. Aditi keeps getting hurt as she watches Avi trying to spend time with Preeti. Avi and Preeti head to the bus alone. But Avi finds something in Bunny's bag while looking for a condom. Bunny and Nana walk the streets at night when the celebrations are over. Bunny hopes the night doesn't end, so Nana tries to confess her feelings. They get interrupted by Aditi and Avi, who has found his envelope. Bunny claims he wanted it to be a surprise and planned to tell them on the last night of the trip. Aditi reads out the letter and learns that Bunny has been accepted at Northwestern University in Chicago for a journalism program. He leaves in three weeks, 
but Avi is upset that their plans of living together are ruined. He doesn't think Bunny can live without them, and looks at Aditi for support. Aditi feels Bunny should go and live his dreams. They have all grown up, and she thinks it's time they stop acting like teenagers. Avi pretends to be happy for him too, and hugs him. When Bunny is alone with Nana, he admits that he's scared of his life changing. His friends aren't happy, and he hasn't even told his dad yet. He will be alone abroad, but feels nice in that moment with Nana. She reminds him that he wants to fly and have crazy adventures in his life. She knows this scholarship will get him closer to his goal, and encourages him. Nana couldn't confess her feelings, even if she loved him a lot. She always knew his dreams meant a lot to him. Nana is just grateful for all the memories of the trip, and Bunny. After that day, he left from their life and never looked back. It has been eight years now, and Nana didn't wait for him either. In the present, Bunny clicks pictures of a deal on the streets. He manages to escape the thugs just in time, and is excited about the adventure. He's an amazing journalist, and keeps traveling with his camera. He joins Rihanna Sarai from Fox Traveler, and keeps shooting her episodes of Traveler Weekend. Bunny is always on the move, and hooks up with a girl he spots on the streets of Paris. Rihanna watches him looking at the sea, and he claims he's watching time pass by. He reminds Rihanna of her home in India, but she keeps forgetting about it. She feels they're both the same, because being on the move is important to them. Bunny is also leaving their show. He feels it's important to keep moving if he doesn't want to be stuck somewhere. He doesn't have a plan, and wants life to surprise him. Rihanna's channel is hosting a new travel show for the European market. The host of the show will live in world-famous cities for three months each, and they will shoot his experiences. She wants Bunny to host this show instead of shooting it. This is exactly what he lives for, so he instantly agrees. Bunny tries to celebrate alone in his room, and downloads a file. He hears Aditi's voice claiming the courier guys returned her package. He opens the video, and learns that she is getting married. It will be a huge celebration from December 20 to 25 in Udipur. She knows he's busy, and doesn't like coming to India but asks him to come for her. Aditi is glad to see Avi at her function, and asks about his bar deal. His bar is about to close, because the investors couldn't bear the losses. The bar just needs renovation, so Aditi offers money. Avi refuses to take it, and claims even his father didn't want to invest. His father still feels lending him money is like flushing it down the toilet. Aditi asks him to not drink so early, but Avi asks her to not get married. He wonders what she sees in her fiancé, Taryn. He seems strange, and they even find him swimming in the pool fully clothed. He lost his engagement ring, and wants to make sure he finds it. They help him get outside, and Taryn is very excited to see Avi. He hugs him so hard that Avi gets completely drenched. Nana is called on the stage as Aditi's best friend. Nana remembers the time Aditi randomly told her she's trying arranged marriage because she is bored. A month later, Aditi called to tell her she's getting married to the same guy. Nana explains that they went on a trek eight years ago. She didn't expect them to stay in touch. But Aditi randomly came over to her place one night after that. They soon became friends, and Nana has seen all her crazy phases. Nana is about to move away after the speech when she hears Bunny's voice. He makes a grand entrance, and looks back at Nana before he goes to greet Aditi. He keeps flirting with Nana as they dance, but everyone is excited about celebrating Aditi's day. Avi is surprised to see Bunny and wasn't expecting him to turn up. He still hugs Bunny, and asks him for a drink. Avi explains he couldn't come to the party because Taryn ruined his suit. He feels Taryn is weird, but thinks Aditi lucked out because he's rich. Aditi claims she loves Taryn because he is sweet and intelligent, and really loves her. Bunny asks about Avi's restaurant, but he claims it's doing well. Bunny is only staying only till the night of Aditi's wedding, after which he leaves for Paris. Avi comments on how Bunny's life has always been happening, the last time Aditi spoke to him, he was in Los Angeles around the time his dad passed away. Bunny tries to avoid the topic, but Avi asks if he will go home this time. Bunny claims he won't, and Aditi tries to make them celebrate like old times with her. Avi points out that everything has changed, and doesn't think of Bunny as a friend anymore. Bunny finds Nana by the pool and asks if he's married. He was calculating whether he should flirt openly or not. She remembers how he used to say that flirting is good for health. He asks if she has always been this beautiful, but Nana doesn't like his cheesy lines. Nana thinks Bunny is still the same, except he doesn't smile openly anymore. Nana asks him to understand that everything gets better if you give it time. Aditi's wedding ceremonies begin, and they all put turmeric all over her. Nana asks Bunny to stop flirting with a woman, 
and do some errands. She asks Bonnie to take out the phone from her bag, and he takes his sweet time. He watches Avi gambling again and losing. He finds a message from an unknown number on Nana's phone and starts teasing her about it. She runs after him to get her phone back, but he has called her admirer to the lakeside. They both get tired, and Dave comes looking for Nana. Bunny assumes he is the texter and leaves them alone. Nana asks Bunny to help her with a huge problem. She asks him to jump on the ledge and look inside a room. Bunny finds Taryn doing a weird dance. Nana wants him to spy on the groom's team to check how good their dance performance is. Bunny notices a woman, who Nana claims must be Taryn's cousin from London. Bunny almost falls when he realizes the cousin is Lana. Aditi asks Bunny about Venice, because Taryn wants to go to a historical place. Bunny feels it's a sewage system, and Avi is also sure she will be bored. Avi changes the channel, and claims he doesn't want to see Bunny on TV. Avi reminds Bunny that he has come to India after eight years, and didn't even bother to stay in touch. Avi kept calling him, but only got his answering machine. Bunny claims he was caught up trying to adjust to a new place. Avi feels everything is about Bunny and his dreams, and he hasn't bothered to check up on how his life is going. He knows Aditi is happy with Bunny, because she didn't have any expectations from him. Avi feels it makes sense, because Bunny didn't even come for his father's funeral. Bunny taunts Avi, and claims he is at least not a loser and gambler like him. They get into a fight, and fall on Aditi's feet. She reminds them she's getting married, and asks them to stop fighting. She makes them apologize to each other, and joins them with a hug. Bunny makes everyone at the party drink, and Lara comes over to hug him. Bunny finds Taryn nervously practicing his steps. Taryn wants Aditi to love his dance, so Bunny makes him drink before his performance. He falls on a stage, but his energy helps him and Lara give an amazing performance. Nana is upset because she doesn't think anyone will like her dance now. She wants to be the best, so Bunny offers to help her. As they start dancing, everyone gets involved since they set the floor on fire. Towards the end, Avi also joins Bunny, and they genuinely make up. They only have the next day free, and Bunny plans to see everything with Nana. He takes her to different spots, and claims this is how exciting his life is. He feels he can't live his whole life in one house and city like her. Nana claims she has chosen this life, and has no interest in living like a nomad. He feels it's because she hasn't seen the world, but she thinks he doesn't understand the comfort of home. Bunny points out the amazing experiences one can have while traveling the world. Nana counters all his points by comparing it to things they can do in India. She thinks the kind of life he describes sounds lonely. He asks her to understand neither of them are wrong, but just different. Bunny tries to rush Nana for the light and sound show, and has a huge list of places he wants to visit. Nana throws away his list, so he is forced to sit with her. Nana points out how they are always likely to miss something or the other in life. She asks him to live in the moment and enjoy the sunset with her. Bunny shares what happened three years ago when he was working for a trek company. He was out on a trek with students and came back to the city eight days later. He saw hundreds of messages because his father had passed away on Monday. He only got to know about it on Saturday. He hadn't spoken to him in a month and hadn't visited India in three years. He feels bad he never listened to his dad whenever he asked him to come home. Nana holds his hand and comforts him. She wakes up when they arrive, but leaves when she realizes how close they are. Bunny puts in money for Avi's poker hand, and they lose. Avi reminds Bunny, this is not Las Vegas, and he wasn't going to hit a double jackpot. Bunny realizes from the Vegas reference that Avi has seen his show. Bunny feels touched, and offers to lend Avi the money he needs to save his bar. Avi reminds him that their friendship isn't so cheap. He only wants Bunny to be there for him, and spend some time. Bunny notices Aditi and Taryn fighting. He asks why she's with him if he gets so jealous of Avi. Aditi explains that she was going to slap Avi. He spent a lot of money on alcohol and poker, and Taryn just cleared his room's bill. Taryn was trying to stop her from insulting Avi. She feels everything in her life was fine before Taryn, but she realized she could also be happy after meeting him. As Bunny realizes how happy they are, he wants to spend more time with Nana. He finds her with Vikram and asks him to leave. He realizes Vikram is the guy who is sending Nana flirty texts. He asks her to send Vikram away because he wants to spend all his time with her. Nana explains that Vikram is just a friend she called because she didn't want to spend time with Bunny. She wants to avoid Bunny because she feels like she's falling in love with him again. Bunny kisses her and admits that he loves her. Nana loves him too but knows that they want different things from life. She can't leave India, 
because her parents and her clinic are here. She also doesn't want to make Bunny choose between his dreams and her. She understands how much his dreams mean to him, and asks him to end whatever they have. Bunny feels lost and alone, but helps Aditi get ready for the wedding. He can't take his eyes off Nana during the ceremony, but leaves without saying goodbye, at the airport. He remembers how his younger version was so excited to go to Chicago for the first time. He decides to go home, and remembers the day he was leaving for Chicago. His dad gave him some money, and he noticed him crying. His dad claims he doesn't want to lose Bunny, but knows he will always do what he wants. Bunny offers to stay back if his father wants it. His father thinks the gesture is enough, and asks Bunny to have an amazing life. Bunny's stepmom finds him crying, and hugs him. Bunny is tired of running away, and regrets not telling his dad how much he loved him. His stepmom knows his dad was always proud of Bunny. He knew how hard it is for someone to live life on their own terms. He was always happy that Bunny had the courage to do it. She asks Bunny to keep following his dreams if he wants to continue making his dad proud. On New Year's Eve, Taryn and Aditi are excited about their honeymoon. Avi's bar is about to close, so he toasts with his customers. Bunny turns up at Nana's house and explains that he canceled the Paris trip. He jokes about not wanting to risk someone else stealing her. As he makes the lights more romantic, he notices her crying. Nana feels bad because she knows the Paris job meant a lot to Bunny. He feels there's a right time for everything and asks Nana to marry him. The ring is fake, but he claims his love is real. She is afraid he will run away or get bored of marriage. She reminds him that marriage is a lifelong commitment, and he can't run away if he's scared. Bunny admits he is crazy about her, and now dreams of traveling the world with her. He is sure he wants to spend the rest of his life with her, and she hugs him. Right before the countdown to New Year's, Aditi makes a call from Taryn's phone. Bunny calls Avi to wish him well, and they all hear familiar voices behind them. Bunny and Nana put their phones on speaker. Avi and Aditi tease them for hiding what was going on between them. But they are very happy for Bunny and Nana, and hope for an amazing year ahead.